welcome to this time of worship for this special day, Mothering Sunday, here on the Amersham Methodist Circuit YouTube channel. I'm the Reverend James Patterson and I'm one of the ministers here in the Amersham Circuit. Whether this is your first time with us or you've joined us many times before for worship, it's a joy to have you here. Today we will be honouring the fact that it is Mothering Sunday and known by many as Mother's Day. And so as we gather, we, th we will be giving thanks for our mothers, those who've been mother-like, but also recognising that for many, today may be a difficult day. Many reasons for that. As we come to worship, we acknowledge those emotions that we may be feeling, whether joy or whether sorrow. And we lay them before God. So as we come into worship, let us pray. God, our Father and Mother, we quieten ourselves to be present to ourselves, to you and to each other. Whatever this day may mean for us, whether that is of challenge, of sorrow or of joy, we acknowledge those emotions and lay them before you that as we come to worship, we may encounter your love, your outrageous, nurturing, unconditional love and mercy. May we encounter you by the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Now our first hymn is from Singing the Faith, number 186, some very famous words from Jesus' own mother, Mary, otherwise known as the Magnificat from Luke's Gospel. It's known as Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord. Beautiful words there in that wonderful, stunning hymn. Let's continue in worship as we bring our prayers of confession and adoration to God. Let us pray. Parenting, nurturing, loving God. The words are almost endless as to what we could call you. 
you do so much for us. And we just take this opportunity to praise you. To praise you for all whom you are. In the words of the hymn we've just sung, unnumbered blessings give our spirit voice. And we tell out our souls the greatness of your name, the greatness of your love, the greatness and the glories of your handiwork. Here we are at the beginning of spring and we thank you for the beautiful spring-like flowers that we are seeing. The daffodils, the snowdrops, the crocuses and the forthcoming bluebells. We thank you for the weather. Perhaps for some of us it's raining, but for some of us it is sunny. And so we give you thanks and praise for your creation. In itself, mother-like. Bringing nurture, bringing growth bringing sustenance and nourishment. And we thank you that you do the same for us. You nurture us. You love us. You delight in us. We're made in your image. All of us showing something of the diversity of you your glory, your greatness throughout the world, throughout creation. We praise and adore you for all whom you are. In so doing, though, we recognise that we fail you in so many ways. Whether it's in our thoughts or our words or in our actions, we realise that we don't show your nurturing love to those around us sometimes. Where perhaps we don't show the love that you show to us, to those around us. Loving and gracious God, we offer to you those things on our hearts for which we are so sorry and in a time of quiet we offer them to you knowing that you hear our prayers and the groans of our hearts. Loving and gracious God, we pray for forgiveness. We thank you that you do forgive. When we're truly sorry, you truly forgive and we thank you. We thank you that you place no conditions on your forgiveness. That you hear the groans of our hearts. You are ready to forgive with arms wide open and embrace us. You're ready to wipe the slate clean. You know our hearts. You know our motives. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. By whom you have made a way for us to be in a right and restored relationship with you. You have forgiven our sins through him and have given us new life. And we praise and adore you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We now come to our reading for today, which, yes, is an unusual one for Mothering Sunday, but there's method in my madness. Well-known parable from Luke chapter 15, which Angelo will read to us. And it'll be followed by a beautiful hymn, which I feel reflects the reading well. Hymn number 443 in Singing the Faith. Come, let us sing of a wonderful love, tender and true. Our reading for today is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. 
the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and travelled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired servants. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found.
what a beautiful hymn, such incredible words that go so well with that reading we've just heard. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we ponder upon the words we've sung and the words we've heard read to us from the Bible, may we all encounter something new of who you are and your love for us that knows no bounds. As we reflect on your words, may you bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts in and through the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. So like I said in the run-up to the reading, perhaps this is an unusual reading for Mothering Sunday. I mean, for a start, it depicts a father, not a mother. But I'd like to think that from this father, we learn something of what being a mother is all about. Here we see a parent embodying both parents and showing such unconditional love and forgiveness to a son who is returning home after having gone and squandered a load of money. And I think this is a story about outrageous love and I love that phrase, outrageous love. It's a love that has given freedom to the younger son to go, to do, to explore the world and be who they want to be. And yet it's a story that goes against the culture of the time. What the younger son did in asking for his share of the inheritance early seemed a bit like, or perhaps to us seems a bit like, wishing his father dead. He swaps half of the property, half of the land, for cash, which she seems shameful somehow. Some perhaps would have thrown the son out, never to return, but not in this story. What we see is a son who goes off, squanders his inheritance in immoral living, finds himself amongst the pigs, even eating with the pigs, which in those times to the ancient Jews, that Jewish community, was an abhorrent thing. Pigs were the most unclean of animals, so to find yourself amongst them, let alone eating with them, is an incredibly dishonouring and shameful thing. This is a story that shows such disgrace. It could have caused the younger son to be banished. And yet, he wakes up somehow. His eyes are woken up in the midst of eating amongst those pigs. He realises what he's done, the life that he did have to begin with. And so after rehearsing through what he would say upon his return to his father, he does go home. And rather than finding a firmly locked door with no welcome, his father runs towards him. His father runs. Now that is outrageous. Why? Well, this is a culture where well-to-do senior figures, such as this man and <laughs> mainly men in those days, would never have been so undignified as to run. And I love the image of this man hoiking up his robe and just running across that field towards his son with arms wide open. That's how my imagination works. And so here the son is welcomed into those loving, accepting arms. It's outrageous. It's lavish. So loving as that father welcomes his son home. To the father, he thought his son was dead. He was lost. And yet he's found. He's alive. This is something that is absolutely and utterly worth celebrating. The son delivers or starts to deliver his speech and yet the parent doesn't really want to hear it. He's just so happy to have his son home to the point where he virtually interrupts the son in his speech and dresses his son in luxury and orders a feast, that poor fatted calf. 
The elder son, the elder brother, cannot stomach it. Unfortunately, he's not portrayed very well here. He focuses on the wrong that his younger brother has done, the wickedness and the lavishness of the welcome. And the father responds by saying, you have always been with me. Your brother was lost, but is alive. We need to celebrate. How awesome is that? So outrageous, undignified, it's radical, it's incredible. And that word again, and I will say it so many times, it's outrageous. This is a wonderful story, yes, of the outrageous love that we've just thought of, but also of our divine parent, of God, God's self, the absolute embodiment of all the qualities of loving parents. God's love is outrageous. The sun is a bit like us, a bit like those ancient Israelites wandering through the wilderness that you would read about in the story of the Exodus. People who get things wrong on so many levels, our thoughts, our words, our actions that never display or hardly ever display the glory of God, and yet every time we wake up amongst those pigs, metaphorically, we realise what we've done and we come back to God. And what we always find with God is God's arms always open to welcome us home, to celebrate us repenting of turning back as repentance talks about. As people turn back, God runs. That's what I'd like to think as well. We're made new thanks to what God did for us through his own son, Jesus, who died on that cross, who rose again triumphant three days later and showed that death is no longer the end. The things that were in the way, such as sin, are now gone. And through Jesus, we can know we are forgiven and transformed. That, to me, is what this story is all about. And when I think about this story, it speaks an awful lot about reconciliation, of being able to come to God, that God has made the way for us to return and to encounter new life. And perhaps our calling is to embody in some way the running father, that divine parent who shows arms that are wide open, ready to receive, ready to forgive, ready to love. When we think of this story, I wonder, who are you in this story? Are you the younger brother who's gone off, squandered everything, turned away from God somehow, and yet are now thinking, mm, I need to come back? Restored relationship is what I need. Are you the elder brother who's always been with God, always felt like with God and yet is resentful? Who are we in this story? Are we the father even who is always ready and welcome, ready and ready to welcome the sinner home as it were, always ready with arms wide open to just show love and that outrageous love. What can we learn from this story? What is the so what question? What is the challenge for us today? Well, as well as reflecting on who we are in this story and why we would think we are that person, I also think what can we do to be more like the parent in this story? No matter how old we are, I'm sure we can all display mother-like, father-like, parent-like qualities to those around us. What would it mean for us to embody the outrageous love of God? I'd like to think that part of our calling is to show that outrageous love, to enable people to come to God and know the transforming love, the unconditional forgiveness and the mercy 
that God offers, not just to us, but to everyone in this world? What would it mean for us to show that in the world? Those people around us in the supermarket queues, in the doctor's waiting rooms, wherever we may be, in the street, in the car, in our homes, in public places. Who are the people to whom we can share the outrageous love of God and enable people to know God's transforming and restoring love? Paul once said that we are ambassadors for Christ. And I like that. I like that as a phrase. As we share God's outrageous, mother-like, father-like, parent-like love that nurtures protects, strengthens, forgives, transforms, whose arms are always open. How are you today? Are you in need of knowing the love, that outrageous love of God? For God is there. God is with us, always with open arms. What a message for Mothering Sunday as we give thanks to those who have been mother-like to us over the years, who have always shown us love, who've always shown us care, whether it's our biological mothers and fathers or whether it's just people who have always been there, whoever they may be. We give thanks today for that love, for that mercy and for the care that has nurtured and protected us over the years. So let us pray. Nurturing God who gave us an example of outrageous and unconditional love, we give thanks for our parents, our families, our friends, those who have always been there ready to care for us, to sit with us, to support us, to nurture us, that allowed us to make our own mistakes, but who are willing to forgive and encourage us. Loving God, we pray for those particularly who find Mothering Sunday such a difficult day. Those who've had difficult experiences of their mother or father or whose family life has been full of conflict, bitterness and recrimination. May you assure these people, may you assure us of your love and bring us to peace. Empathetic God whose son died on a cross, we pray for those who find Mothering Sunday so difficult, perhaps because they've lost a child or because they're unable to have children. We pray for those and pray for comfort and for peace and give thanks to those who come alongside and show such mother-like qualities. Gracious God, be with all those in need, who are in need of you and assure them of your love this day and always and help us to show us how to care. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn, hymn number 416, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy.
We now come to our prayers of intercession where we pray for the world, our communities, those known to us, ourselves. And in this prayer, to the bidding, we pray to you, I invite you to respond, bring healing and hope. We pray to you, bring healing and hope. Let us pray. God of love, of outrageous love, we pray for the softening of our hearts and the opening of our arms, for generosity and love that welcomes the lost, for our need of your tenderness to restore our failures, for the strength to answer your call to serve others, for the church to be renewed in loving and giving, of showing such welcome and love. We pray to you, bring healing and hope. God of nurturing love, for mothers across the world who are apart from their children, for all motherless and lost children, for all of us whose mothers have died, for a parent or parents of a child who has died, and for the children without parents, for all who long for children but are unable to have them for all the struggles of family life, for children far away from home, for unaccompanied children fleeing, fighting. We pray to you, bring healing and hope. God of love, for the places in the world that are torn apart by conflict, by famine or by natural disaster. We lift to you Ukraine, Malawi, Afghanistan, Yemen, Turkey and Syria, and also those known to us. We pray for the hungry and the homeless, for the persecuted and the oppressed, for the displaced and the dispossessed. Loving God, we pray to you, bring healing and hope. God of love, for the needs in our own communities, and those known to us. For families under pressure, people struggling with the rising cost of living, for people in debt and distress who have nowhere to turn, for all who need to know today that they are loved. for the sacrifices that form the fabric of parenthood, for children and young people facing a future full of challenges. Loving God, we pray to you, bring healing and hope. God of love for all who are known to us in need of hope, of love, healing, and comfort. We lift them to you in a time of quiet, naming them before you. God of love, we pray to you, 
bring healing and hope. We pray for the lengthening hours of daylight, for those people who lift our burdens, wipe away our tears and share our lives and our dreams, who call out our best selves. We give you thanks and praise this day. For your faithful presence with us through darkness and light, and for a deeper experience of your love that shapes us, calls us, rescues us, and will bring us home. We give you thanks, and we give you praise. And we join all these prayers in the prayer that you taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. In closing our worship, I think there was only one hymn we could have when we have been reflecting on the outrageous love of God, our divine parent. That is hymn number 503 in Singing the Faith, Love Divine or Love's Excelling. together. Let us pray. God of outrageous love, thank you that we can never fall out of your love. No matter what our mistakes, 
no matter how mean and grudging our love can be at times. As you welcome us with ever open arms, enlarge our hearts and our minds to serve faithfully and to love outrageously in this world. And the blessing of God, our divine parent, our creator, redeemer and sustainer, rest and remain with you and those you know and love this day and forevermore. Amen.